Welcome to Mastering in the Box, and in this week's video, we're going to take a look at how we can master our projects using the song page. Hello, and welcome to Mastering in the Box. I am your host, Smudge, and in this week's video, we're going to continue the series Mastering in Studio One 5 by taking a look at how we can master our projects using the song page. For those of you who have Studio One 5 Professional, then you will be aware that we have the project page, which is a dedicated function for mastering projects. But not everyone has Studio One Fire Professional. So if you don't have Studio One Fire Professional and you are looking to master your tracks, you can still do it using the song page. I'm going to go through how you can set up your song page to be able to get the best out of your masters. Now, for the purposes of this video, I really don't want to get too much into the comparison between the project page and the song page because I will be featuring this in a video very soon. And there are pros and cons to using either. But I really want to show you how you can get the most out of the song page. For those who are using the artist version, you won't have access to the project page anyway. So I really want to show you how you can really get the best out of mastering your tracks using the song page. And let's be fair, not everyone likes using the project page. There's a lot of feedback I receive from people who say, I really need to explore the project page further, and they already do their mastering in the song page. So I really want to show you how you can get the best out of the song page to get the best out of your masters. So when it comes to setting up a mastering session in the song page, I would still recommend whether you are mastering a single, an EP or an album, I'd still recommend you export the mix down into a single stereo file of WAV format. And the reason why I'd recommend this is because you need to break away from that mixing mindset. You need to really separate yourself from the mixing and think about your mastering like a mastering engineer and then go about it really from uh, almost like an independent mindset. Think about it from the perspective that you're mastering someone else's track. Try and think impartially about what you would do to improve the song further. Now, Studio One Fire Professional is fantastic at giving you the ability to move between the mixing functions and the mastering functions. So if you're working in the professional system, you can record and you can mix your song in the song page and you can automatically transfer that mix down into the project page and start mastering your track and if you need to make any mix tweaks you can then go back into the mix session in the song file make whatever tweaks you need to make and then you can then export it back into the project page you can update the mastering file and then carry on the mastering that way now that's really good and creates a lot of flexibility but i would always recommend and i would argue if you think about it like a master engineer, you really need to separate yourself from that mixing mindset and start thinking about it like a master engineer and just try and break away from it as much as possible. So how can we go about setting up a new project in the song page? Well, click new song and you set your song title to the project title that you want to call it. And then you set your directory here for where you want to save your ultimate projects. In terms of sample rate, the rule of thumb that I would use is just go with the sample rate of the audio tracks. You can look into sample rate conversion and upsampling, etc. once you get more involved in the mastering process, but to keep things nice and simple, keep the sample rate the same as the audio files, the WAV files that you're using, same as the resolution, time base, I would always recommend seconds. And the reason why I'd recommend this is when you are looking at different songs, so if you're mastering an EP or an album, etc., the transition between the songs you want to look at in time-based format. So I'd set the time base as seconds rather than bars. Song length. This is the ultimate song length for your project. So if you have three songs at five minutes a song, then you want to set your song length of at least... 15 minutes and allow for gaps between the songs so you get your transitions tempo time signature i don't change but you must make sure that you untick this box here because you don't want to stretch the audio files to the song tempo and then once you're happy with that 
you click OK. So the next step will be to import your songs. I've already imported three songs here just for example purposes. But you literally go into your song, you import your file, you go to where your files are and you'd import these songs that you want to master. They will automatically be put onto separate tracks but they will all start at the beginning of the timeline. And then what you'll then need to do is click and drag the tracks to where you want them. This is going to be a little bit more fiddly in the song page because you're then going to have to start getting into the transitions. But then if you use your zoom in functions, you can go through and you can really tweak the transitions between the songs. I would also at this point start thinking about do you need fade ins of the songs and fade out of the songs and you can trim your files up here by clicking on and deleting certain parts, etc. if you need to. So. I would start looking at this at this point and start looking at your transitions in terms of the, the time base in between each song. If you use the project page, if you have the professional version, it will do that for you. And it, I believe it defaults to two second transition between the end of one file and the start of the next file. It's just a little bit more fiddly in the song page, but it's very much doable and it's not going to take you too much time. So now that you've got the tracks set up in the project as you like them, you have the transitions at the time base that you require and you set the fade ins by clicking the arrow in the top left hand corner or the fade outs by clicking the arrow in the top right hand corner. Now is a really good time just to sit back and listen to the project from start to finish and start to make notes of what you can do to enhance the tracks further. I would still recommend doing this, even if these are your own tracks that you've recorded and you've mixed, just listen to them with a critical ear and just try to highlight what you can do to enhance the tracks further. Use some of the visual references. So for example, if you look at this waveform here on track three, the waveform is much bigger than the waveform on track one. So we know that the volume on track three is gonna be louder than the volume on track one. So you can start to think about how you can balance those and get more of an even sound between the different tracks. I would also take this opportunity with this critical listening is to really listen for anything that needs repair work. Now, this is the prime idea to do it before you start getting into any processing. So if you hear any clicks or pops or any unwanted noise, now is a good chance to do it. Inside of Studio One Fire Professional, we don't have any spectral editing functions at present. What we do have is a really handy tool with the clip gain envelopes. So in Studio One Fire Professional, whilst we don't have some form of spectral editing capabilities at present, what we can do is use the clip gain envelopes, get a very similar feel. So with spectral editing, you can effectively edit out unwanted noise, frequencies from clicks, pops, unwanted background noise, etc. But what you can use the clip gain envelopes to do a very similar thing. And how do we do this? Well, you see on the waveform where it has the track name. If you go above the track name and right click, you then get a dialog box here for gain envelope. If you tick that box, you will then see the gain envelope applied to the center of the track. Now, the way that I would do this is by pressing F2, you get then get a more enhanced view of the waveform. You can then go through and you can select the unwanted area. So for example, this waveform here, if that was the area that was a click or pop that I didn't want and I wanted to reduce the noise, what I can do is I can go into this area, I can highlight that particular area here, and if I then move the cursor slightly above the waveform, the cursor changes to a fence shape or an elongated height shape. And if I left click and drag down, it reduces the gain envelope. So it reduces the volume of that particular part of the waveform. It's a really cool trick. So if you get unwanted noise in your track, where it's clicks, pops, background noise, you can really go in and surgically edit it and reduce the volume of that part so it doesn't affect the rest of the track. 
So just to recap, we've imported the tracks into our mastering session. We've set the transitions between the end of one song and the beginning of the next song. We've set our fade ins and our fade outs. We've gone through and we've listened to the tracks all the way through. We've made notes of what we need to do to enhance the songs further. Through our critical listening, we've highlighted parts that need repair and we've used the clip gain envelopes to repair any unwanted background noise, clicks, pops, etc, etc. Now's the time to start getting into the final process of the tracks themselves and we can pretty much use our mixing functions to set up our session as to how we would a normal mastering session so if we was to use our f5 button to toggle into our effects and our plugins we can literally click and drag the plugins onto our individual inserts of the tracks and by doing it this way you will then start to process the tracks how you want them to sound so if you want to apply some dynamic compression you can do that by applying a compressor you can put your eq in there you can put your multiband dynamics in there and then the way i like to use the master track is for the overall limiting and for the post function for our metering tools so i always use the metering tools post limiter so we can get the final loudness of the tracks for our loudness normalization and we can use the inserts of the individual tracks for the individual track processing now one of the things i like to do is i don't like to raise the volume of the tracks too much by limiting because for me it tends to apply too much compression and it reduces the dynamic range so one of the things i like to do before i start to master it is to normalize the audio and we can do that here by clicking on the waveform right clicking and then we can go down and we can go to audio and normalize audio. We can do it a different way by clicking on the waveform, clicking on the audio at the top of the screen and clicking normalize audio, or we can literally just click on the waveform and click Alt and N and it will normalize the audio for us. Now the way that the normalize audio function works is it effectively eliminates the difference between the peak level and the digital ceiling. So it's gonna raise the overall volume of the track without applying compression and if we start to apply compression it reduces dynamic range which can cause us all sorts of problems further down the line it can make the songs less interesting so i just like to use the normalize audio function because it just allows us to increase the volume without applying compression and we can go back into our f3 function and apply whatever processing we need so the last thing I want to discuss around about setting up your mastering session in the song page is the ability to use volume automation. I'm not bitter at all. The fact that volume automation is not included in the project page does not bother me one bit. I mean, the fact that I cannot use volume automation in the project page, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't make me upset at all. It doesn't make me frustrated, etc., etc., etc. Anyway, um, just going back to the song page you can use volume automation in the song page and you can do it by clicking this little symbol at the bottom of the track and it opens up the volume automation lane here you can set it to read mode touch mode latch mode and write mode and just go in and just add some final tweaks so if you just feel that the track needs maybe a half a db boost in the choruses and you want to maybe bring the pre-chorus down by half a db so you get a little bit more of a volume adjustment and a bit more excitement leading into the chorus you can do that using the song page you cannot do that using the project page but i'm not better at all and i don't let it affect me at all and i don't talk about it at all etc etc so that's it for this week's video and i think i've waffled on enough but i have to say i'm really impressed with the flexibility um of being able to master inside of the song page if i want some of those repair functions such as the clip gain envelope I've got it there already. If I want to go in and add some volume automation, I can do it in the song page. And although the project page is geared around mastering and holistically I've been drawn to the project page because it is designed for mastering engineers, actually some of that more advanced metering 
such as the spectrum metering and the phase metering and level metering, we have standalone plugins that we can use inside the song page. So I can really see myself using the song page for mastering more projects in the future because it just gives you more ability to go in and look at more of the minute detail. Personally, I feel just with some of the things such as the clip gain envelopes and the volume automation, not that I'm not going to go on about it again and not having that involved in the project page. It doesn't bother me at all. So, you know, I'm not going to let that bother me. But if you like this content, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to know more about digital mastering, don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button below. And don't forget to click that bell and select all so you receive notifications on all of our future releases moving forward. I really hope you can get some benefit from these videos and let me know in the comments down below how do you master inside the Studio One? Do you like the project page? Do you prefer the song page? What do you find the benefits of using each? I will be doing a comparison video in the near future so you know, keep an eye out for that one but let me know in the comments down below how you master inside the Studio One. All that's left me to say is I hope you'll keep safe and well. I look forward to seeing you in the next video coming real soon.